This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. One of the things that is most perplexing to me with the advent and the, the, with Donald Trump coming on the scene as a politician and really uh, calibrating the Republican Party into a mask-off racist organization and a, uh, just a looking the other way at criminality. I mean, really, it's a cult. 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 But one of the most striking things to me is that it, it uh, initiated on the scene a class of individual who before wasn't really involved in politics, didn't really know about politics, didn't vote, didn't really care. We witnessed this with the insurrection. I think CNN was who did it. They did like a, a cross-section of the, of the arrests that were made and like a massive percentage of these people who participated in the insurrection against the United States didn't even vote. Like, they're just there for the drama of it. And aligned to this, adjacent to this, it's not a direct correlation, but it, 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 connected to this is this class of individual. And I don't mean classes and their socioeconomic status. I mean just this, there's this, this, this trope, this stereotype of a person who would be, their life would be materially changed, materially better if they were to support Democrats and Democrat policies. They just would, but they support Donald Trump. And they think in their head that they're, they're sticking up for themselves, that they're advocating for themselves by supporting Donald Trump. I'm rambling here, but let me show you these two clips. I actually have three clips. One is just kind of a, puts a nice neat bow on what I'm talking about here. But Right side broadcasting, the main anchor is like Marjorie Taylor Greene's new boyfriend. And I think it's him doing the questioning. Maybe not. I'm not really super familiar with his stupid face. So um, he's interviewing people before uh, the Iowa rally. And he talks to this first old man who's bemoaning his situation that he, he a deer totaled his car. I think he means he ran into a deer with his truck and it totaled it. So that's a bummer. But, you know, he's got his, his VA benefits and he's, uh, he's got his medical expenses and they're being paid by the government. So he's, he's going to be okay. And it really should be some kind of a wake-up call for these people that the services that he's utilizing to make his life easier would be gone if we left it to Republicans. Repu I'll tell you what, let's play the clip and we'll talk about why it is just nuts that he believes what he believes. I just had to purchase a new car because I a deer totaled my other one. And it just, everything, the cost of everything is way too high. And insurance, medical insurance as well. Medical and Medicaid. Well, fortunately, I'm on Medicare, so that helps out a lot right there. And I'm a veteran, so I've got, I've got my VA benefits. So The cost of everything is so high. Yet, he's there to support the candidacy of Donald Trump and other Republican candidates. Time and 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 time again... When Republicans have the, 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 when they're at the helm and they have the ability to pass legislation that will assist groups like this gentleman is in, he's an, he's an old man, he's a veteran. Republicans want to take away from those benefits. They want to reduce those benefits. They want to make his life materially harder whether it be passing the PACT Act or a number of different policies. Republicans oppose those things. They oppose them. The same Republicans who vote against the infrastructure bill and then go back to their districts and tweet and, and talk about the benefits that the, the district is now experiencing, even though they voted against the thing that they're now acting like they had a part in. And this guy's fooled by it. This old man is fooled by it. Because if Republicans had their way, Medicare would be slashed, maybe eliminated. That's not hyperbole, that's fact. Matt Gates has talked about, I mean, members of Congress have talked like this. They talk about with their, their fake at flags waving high in the air about supporting veterans and supporting the troops and loving the troops. But then when it comes time to fund programs, Republicans are opposed. 
Yet, old man Joe here, he's there for it. He's there for Trump. He's there for Republican policies while touting that his life is okay. There's a safety net there for him because he's got his Medicare and he's got his VA benefits. No thanks to Trump. No thanks to Republicans. Not just him. It's not an isolated incident. These people exist by the thousands or the millions out there. Same interviewer, same stage, talking to a woman who, again, talked about she's on disability. She's got her Medicaid. They turned her Medicaid off, and she's in a tight spot, but she's there to see if Donald Trump will help her. Hey. But what is Trump, under his policies, how did it benefit your life? Are you work? Are you retired? I mean, no, I'm disabled. I have a broken plate in my back. And uh, it really bummed me because during COVID, I was supposed to get my third surgery and have it fixed. And when the doctor, a very big specialist, went to fix it, he said, where's your Medicaid? I said, what do you mean, where's my Medicaid? Well, they took my Medicaid. So I'm coming up here hoping I can get my surgery done. She's there to support Trump. She's there to see Trump, that maybe he can make her life better. Yet Donald Trump... What, what is Donald Trump and the agenda items of the Republican Party but to cut off her Medicaid, her access, because she's on disability? Republican, they should just tell her to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and be careful not to hurt that, that disc or whatever is making you disabled, but you, you need to do for yourself. Quit being a drain, a suck on the system. Quit using government benefits that are there to make your life better. But she's there for Trump. Now, the final clip in this, uh, the, the thing that I said would put a little tidy bow on this, is one of the elements that absolutely, without doubt, creates an atmosphere where people feel comfortable making it make sense to themselves. And that's the same lady we just watched talking about how God sent Trump down here, she says. He is sent by God. And when you, when you pepper in religion, when you weave in religion, you can make people believe anything, horrible or not. They suspend reality when you have people who are believing that God sent Trump here to save, I guess, America. Trump, um, chances are he could be watching us right now from his plane. What message do you have to President Trump right now as he comes to uh, uh, this this, this I want a picture with you, sir. You are just, you know what? God sent him down here. I promise you. He's, he's working for God. Yeah. Big, big thing in my world. There, there's, a, there's a big picture at play here. Uh, one- Imagine believing that, that Donald Trump, the man who held up a Bible after gassing peaceful protesters in Jackson Square behind the White House, north of the White House, that he was sent by God. A man who is a self-dealing demagogue. A hateful person by all accounts. A self-interested individual. Selfish. That he was chosen by a creator of everything seen and unseen to come down here and fix America. There's a lot of work to be done to change the hearts and minds. I don't think it would take much to somebody in their lives to to point out some of these inaccuracies, some of these contradictions in the things that they say and they think and they believe. If you know somebody, start a conversation. Do some of this initial work, you know, uh, uh, plant the mustard seed that will grow into a, a, a big tree or whatever the metaphor is. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about this. Do you know somebody like this in your life? Do you have someone like this in your life? Um, Not to give you homework, but, you know, there's work to be done. Uh, You can leave a comment below. We can mix it up in the comments. That helps the algorithm to promote this channel to somebody new. You can also call and leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on social media. I'm on, at Dollamore on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, Facebook, all of them at Dollamore. That's where you can find me if you are so inclined. And if you want to help take part 
in what we're doing here, the content that we produce, the message that we're putting out. You can do so by going to my Patreon page, first and foremost, that's the best way. Patreon.com slash I Doubt It Podcast. You can click the join button below the YouTube video, become a channel member, or you can hit the super thanks button, buy some merch, share this video, like this video, comment on this video, make sure you're subscribed. All of those ways are helpful to support the channel and what we do. I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time until I do. Be genuine. Take care of one another.